Today, we are not wasting milk. I had some milk at my job that passed their use-by date and I don't want to waste it so let's make some cheese. Alongside this date on my phone. So it's like nine days past. Let's talk about why milk goes bad and what this label means. So first of all, nine days past, the ultimate test of whether milk is good or not should be your nose and that goes for most things right nine days past this is good milk i have an open gallon of this in my fridge and i've been eating a lot of cereal because this is free milk but curtis are you really going to eat that much cereal no let's uh let, let's use this up let's make some cheese the cheese we're gonna make today it's known as farmer's cheese or paneer or queso fresco and this is gonna be good for a week to two weeks in the refrigerator you can freeze it and the texture is gonna change slightly if that's okay with you it's okay with me so then why if this milk is more than a week past the date does this date say this date well, there's really no governing body here in the U.S. that puts this label on milk. In fact, the FDA is only concerned with putting use-by dates on baby food. This restriction, this use-by date, this is the domain of each individual state, and each individual state can say a different thing. In fact, there are a handful of states who don't even require use by dates on their milk so what does that mean for manufacturers is that they usually put the date that their product is going to taste the best by or they're going to put a date down that will urge you to buy more milk more quickly so why did i fearlessly drink this glass of milk well milk going bad is not really all that bad Lactic acid builds up in the milk, even though it is pasteurized milk, it doesn't knock out all of the bacteria, it just suppresses most of it. The bacteria that produces lactic acid is present in grass and a lot of different green things that the cows are eating. So this is a natural phenomenon and lactic acid is not really harmful to humans. We should all take that with a grain of salt because a grain of salt makes things a lot more delicious, but harmful bacteria can also grow in milk. You're just not going to find it as much. So if this smells like something other than spoiled milk, that means that he, someone messed up. So then why does milk get chunky and separate when it goes bad? Well, that has nothing to do with the milk being bad either. That has everything to do with the acid. When milk is homogenized or made uniform, it passes through holes that are small enough to break up those fat globules and distribute them all throughout the milk. So this is actually a colloid of solids and liquids. So then all those fat globules repel each other because they have the same charge and when we add acid on purpose or naturally, it balances it up so they all come back together. And that's all souring of milk is is those fat globules coming back together and forming the curd. That's what we're gonna do on purpose right here. Now you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need a cheesecloth. These are really cheap, two, three bucks. Uh, you could also use a brewing bag 
This is a little bit more expensive, picked up from any homebrew store, but I just happen to have one around because I brew. A whisk, something to cut and juice the lemons, and if you're juicing lemons, it doesn't hurt to strain. This is gonna take a minute to come up to temperature, so let's get that going right away. Medium high heat. I'll have all this stuff linked in the description below so you can get one of these if you want to. I went with four lemons because one lemon will give me about an eighth of a cup or 60 milliliters of juice. And standard recipe is about an ounce, 30 milliliters per quarts or liter. And that gets me just shy. If it's not curdling quite the way I want to, I'll make up the difference with white vinegar. Stirring just helps it heat evenly, but is not completely necessary. A thermometer is also not completely necessary. The magic number is 190 Fahrenheit or about 88 Celsius. Milk, however, is very recognizable when it's ready to go. A watch pot never boils. This is about 130 right now, which is about the temperature that I like my coffee. I've got a little bit to go here. I'm just going to do some prep over here. I'm going to make two cheese balls. For my first and smaller one, I'm going to take this brewing bag and I'm going to double it up a couple times. You can also do this with a cotton t-shirt as long as it's freshly laundered in some sort of an unscented detergent. You don't want that in your cheese. And I'm going to make a bigger one in this guy here. When the milk gets all foamy like that, it's steaming really good. That's when it's ready. Just for continuity's sake, let's take a temperature here. Okay, 183, so it's not quite there but I've pulled it at this point before and gotten great results. At this point, the milk has visually changed texture. I can tell I'm dealing with something that's a little bit different. It's reached that point that I'm always warning you about, above 155 degrees Fahrenheit, where milk changes and will always taste burnt. We're doing that on purpose right now to get something amazing. And I'm taking care not to really scrape the bottom or the sides too much. If any milk does burn onto the bottom or the sides, I really want that to stay in the pot instead of make it into my cheese. All right, 190, it's very bubbly. It's noticeably changed texture. So we're gonna do two things here. We're gonna kill our heat. We're gonna add our acid. And that will immediately start to curdle our milk. I'm just gonna stir that around. So now I'm just gonna leave it alone. My heat's off, I'm gonna let it cool down enough to handle. I'm gonna come back in a few minutes. I'm gonna have visually separated curds and whey. I'm gonna get it into my cheesecloth, let it start draining. This is a lot of liquid, so at first I'm gonna use a ladle. You can string these up however you want. The gravity will force the whey out of the curd. We're gonna be left with a really nice farmer's cheese. We're also not gonna throw this whey away. This can be used for a lot of stuff. You can replace the water in bread. You can make ricotta cheese. In fact, in the next few episodes, I think that I'll do all about how to use 
your curds and whey from this. That was probably a better vessel anyway. All right, these are ready. We're gonna put them on a plate. I'm gonna let it firm up in the fridge for at least an hour, but I'm going overnight. Right, these cheese balls have rested in the fridge overnight. Overnight's not completely necessary. You only really need to do it for an hour. And remember, this is all free food. This is all food that made from milk that would have gone bad. It wasn't bad yet. Let's put this one away for future episodes. And this can just live in your fridge for a week, up to two weeks. It's really the best tasting within the first couple of days though. You can freeze it. It's gonna get a little bit more crumbly. And for this one, I'm gonna coat it in some herbs. I have here thyme, some rosemary, and then a little kosher salt, white pepper. Doesn't really matter how much, just use as much as you have. There's only so much that's gonna to stick to it. I'd say that all together here I have about a tablespoon of herbs white pepper, you can use black pepper or mixed pepper. A couple Christmases ago, my mother got me all of this peppercorn and it's been a dream of mine since then to get an individual grinder for each peppercorn. And then I'd go through them a lot more quickly. Maybe I'll do an episode on all spices. But for right now, I have the mortar and pestle. I'm not gonna go too crazy here trying to get this too fine. It's Farmer's cheese, it's supposed to be a little rustic. And that was kind of a lot, so I only used half of it. And then really a decent amount of kosher salt. Remember, I didn't salt this. If you want to salt this or season this at all, you can do it when it's still in the cheesecloth before you wrap it up. I just wanted to be able to use my whey in whatever application I want to use it in, and I didn't want a bunch of seasoning in there. Let me get that on a plate you can see it on. As always, we try not to waste anything. These rosemary stems go in here to become future stock. So this is about one gallon or four liters worth of cheese. If you're using a smaller amount, start with a tablespoon of acid to one quart or a liter of milk and you can work up from there if it doesn't start to separate. You can also do this with milk that's already started to turn. It's just gonna taste a little bit funky, but that's fine. It's not gonna hurt you at all. If you're gonna salt this while it's in the cheesecloth before you tie it up, start with about a quarter teaspoon per quart or liter of milk and you can always add more salt to the outside later or next time you do it, you can add a little bit more. Let's give it a taste. All right, so it's reasonably crumbly, but it holds together all right. And that's just really, really fresh so fresh so creamy it has like the texture of a chevre but without the goaty flavor 
I like this a lot. Also, the crumblies from this unseasoned cheese ball are really good on this toast with this jam. Mmm. Oh, man. That's so good. Guys, get in the kitchen. Make yourself something awesome. I'm going to be back over the next couple weeks with this cheese ball. With all of that whey that I gathered, it's in my fridge. I'm going to show you exactly what you can make with all that stuff so that a month from now, if somebody offers you four free gallons of milk, you're going to know exactly what to do with it. Cheers.